Hi, this is Miss Vital. This podcast is on cell reproduction and is meant to correspond with Chapter 12 in the textbook. In 1951, Henrietta Lacks, a 31-year-old mother of two, went to John Hopkins University in Baltimore, where a one-inch purple cancerous tumor was discovered on her cervix. She was treated with high doses of radiation, but in six months she was dead. When the doctors originally performed a biopsy, which is a sample, it was given to researchers who were trying to grow human cells, but they had not yet succeeded. Most human cells died immediately. Henrietta Lack cells were different from anything they had ever seen before. The same virulence that killed her was unstoppable in the lab. They were named HeLa cells. In the 1950s and 1960s, growing human cell cultures was exciting work. New cultures were being developed all the time. In the 1970s, five different cultures from different labs in the Soviet Union were sent to a lab in Berkeley. A research discovered that there were all HeLa cells. It was soon discovered that 90 different cell lines used in various studies around the world were all actually HeLa cells. HeLa cells were so vigorous, if a single one of her cells fell into a petri dish, it would take over. The cells could float through the air inside the tiny bits of spray created when a rubber stopper was pulled from a bottle containing HeLa cells. Years of research and the biology of cancer had to be rethought. Today, cell biologists have learned to be more careful. HeLa cells are still used today all over the world. Henrietta cells continued to divide relentlessly. In the 1950s, they were used to grow poliovirus, enabling researchers to develop a vaccine. Today, genetic engineers insert genes for human proteins into HeLa cells, which produce the proteins. An adult human contains about 10 trillion or 10 to the 13th cells. All of these originated from a single cell. By the time you finish watching this podcast, your body will have created 3 billion cells. Your body creates about 1 billion new cells every 5 minutes. Each new cell has a copy of the genetic material you inherited from your parents. Each cell also has the machinery and materials needed to interpret that genetic information. Cell reproduction has different results in a single cell and multi-celled organisms. Another type of cell division also occurs in sexually reproducing organisms. This is a process that produces sperm and egg, which will be discussed in the next podcast. It is called meiosis. So why do cells divide? Reproduction is one reason. There's asexual reproduction where one parent clones itself, or there's sexual reproduction where two parents come together to produce an offspring. Another reason cells divide is for growth. A fertilized egg grows into an adult organism. All the cells in your body came from that original fertilized egg. A third reason why cells divide is repair, to repair damaged tissues or injuries. And the last reason is to replace dead cells. The cell theory states that all cells came from pre-existing cells. Cells know how to make other cells because the information is stored in the chromosomes inside the nucleus. A chromosome is a complex of DNA and proteins. Chromatin is made of thin strands of DNA and histones. Histones are the proteins associated with DNA. Chromatin thickens and condenses during cell division to become visible chromosomes. In prokaryotes, which include bacteria, They divide using a different process called binary fission. Here, a cell divides into two equal halves. You see the DNA loop in the original cell, and there is a cell membrane and a cell wall. The DNA replicates, and then the cell begins to divide and pinch into two until two daughter cells are formed. These are identical clones of the original parent cell. Eukaryotic cell division is quite different and more complex and in eukaryotes the cells go through a cell cycle. Everything that happens to a cell from the time it forms until the time it divides, which is the time from one division to the next, occurs in the cell cycle. There are three major phases of the cell cycle. The M phase it includes mitosis and cytokinesis, and this is cell division. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm and the cell membrane, and it includes the formation of the two daughter cells. Interphase is for growth and preparation for cell division. It is the normal time of the cell's life where it's doing its normal functions. G1 
which is the first part of interphase. The G is for gap or growth. Cells accumulate materials and machinery needed for DNA synthesis during G1. The second part of interphase is S. This is DNA synthesis. Each chromosome duplicates itself during the S phase. So you now have twice the amount of the original DNA in your cells. The G2 part of interphase, which is the gap between DNA synthesis and cell division, is where materials are assembled and machinery is created for cell division. The cytoplasm and the organelles also double. The time a single cell takes to go through the cell cycle varies from organism to organism and from tissue to tissue. Most plant and animal cells divide in less than a day with cell division, mitosis, and cytokinesis occurring in an hour or two. But every cell is different. Neurons spend most of their lives in interphase, as do muscle cells. Cancer cells spend very little time in interphase. Muscle and neurons are in states of non-division where cancer cells actually are in states of continuous cell division. The different parts of interphase, S, G1, and G2, are not detectable under the microscope. Chromosomes do not become visible until the beginning of mitosis. Each chromosome consists of two separate but connected bodies called sister chromatids. Sister chromatids are duplicate copies with exactly the same genetic material. They are connected by a centromere, which is a disk made of DNA and protein. Homologs are each chromosome in a homologous pair. Homologous pairs are pairs of matching chromosomes. Homologs behave independently during mitosis. Chromosomes come in matching pairs like socks. For example, humans have 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. Fruit flies have eight chromosomes in four pairs. Mitosis is a process of cell division in eukaryotic cells where the nucleus of a cell divides into two new nuclei with the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. The first phase is prophase. During prophase, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes, each made of two chromatids joined by the centromere. The nucleoli disappear, mitotic spindles form, they are usually shaped like a football. Spindles are made of microtubules. Those are hollow tubes made of tubulin proteins. This is identical to the microtubules found in cilia and flagella in the cytoskeleton. In animal cells, each pole of the spindles contain a pair of centrioles. Those are small cylinders that lie at right angles to each other. They help to organize the microtubule assembly. The centriole creates small asters around it, and that whole complex is called the centrosome. It is considered the microtubule organizing center. The astral microtubule extends outwards to form a star. Kinetochores are specialized disc-shaped structures that attach the spindle to the centromere. Kinetochore spindles are spindles with chromosomes attached to them. Anastral is a term where there are no centrioles or asters present. Plants are anastral. The centrosome doesn't seem to be significant in cell division because if it's removed from an animal cell, cell division still occurs, and plant cells never have them in the first place. The second phase of mitosis is metaphase. The chromosomes move halfway between the poles, forming like an equator. This forms a imaginary plane called the metaphase plate. Anaphase is when the chromatids separate. The sister chromatids split at the centromeres. The chromatids move to opposite poles. The poles also get further apart, so the cell becomes more oblong. Each pole now has equal and identical sets of chromosomes. Telophase is kind of the opposite of prophase. The mitotic apparatus disappears. The chromosomes uncondense into chromatin. The nucleoli reappears, and the nuclear membrane forms. Cytokinesis is the second part of cell division. Cytokinesis is different in plants and animals. In animals, a cleavage furrow forms in animal cells. It forms near the metaphase plate. 
The cell membrane pinches off cytoplasm, cytoplasm to form two new daughter cells. There is a contractile ring of microfilaments inside the cell membrane. As it shrinks, it squeezes the center into two cells. In plants, the cleavage furrow doesn't form because of the cell wall. Instead, a cell plate forms in telophase. The cell plate builds a new cell wall between daughter cells. Actually, little vesicles filled with the materials for the cell wall line up, and as those vesicles fuse together, it creates the internal part of the plasma membrane and the cell wall. How does a cell fit all of its DNA into its nucleus? DNA must duplicate before cell division. A double helix molecule is so fine that a strand long enough to circle the earth would weigh less than a grain of sand. If a cotton thread was wrapped around the earth, it would weigh over 600 pounds. The equator of the earth is over 25,000 miles. DNA in one human cell weighs 6 times 10 to the minus 12 grams, that's 6 trillionths of a gram, and it is about 2 meters long, which is over 6 feet. The DNA folds and collapses with the aid of histones. These are special proteins with a positive charge due to the amino acids arginine and lysine. Most cells have five types of histones, H1, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4, and every cell has millions of copies of each type of histone. DNA has a negative charge, so the histones bind to it tightly. The DNA and the histones look like beads on a string. Each bead and its section of string is called a nucleosome. That is a DNA and histone complex. The histone H1 holds the nucleosomes together. This packs about five centimeters of DNA into one millimeter. Chromosome banding is the result of DNA forming loops that cluster together and result in bands. We see bands when we look at chromosomes because there is the selective binding of different dyes that we use to stain them, creating those different color bands. Biologists compare banding patterns to normal chromosomes to look for genetic abnormalities. The eukaryotic cell is regulated by a molecular control system. The frequency of cell division varies with the type of cells. These cells these cell cycle differences result from the regulation at the molecular level. There is evidence for cytoplasmic signals. The cell cycle appears to be driven by specific chemical signals present in the cytoplasm. Some evidence for this hypothesis comes from experiments in which cultured mammal cells at different phases of the cell cycle were fused to form a single cell with two nuclei. The sequential events of the cell cycle are directed by a distinct cell cycle control system, which is similar to a clock. The cell cycle control system is regulated by both internal and external controls. The clock has specific checkpoints where the cell cycle stops until a go-ahead signal is received. For many cells, the G1 checkpoint seems to be the most important one. If a cell receives a go-ahead signal at the G1 checkpoint, it will usually complete the S, G2, and M phases and divide. If the cell does not receive the go-ahead signal, it will exit the cycle, switching into a non-dividing state called the GO phase. There are two types of regulatory proteins involved in cell cycle control, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKS. The activity of cyclins and CDKS fluctuates during the cell cycle. MPF, which is maturation promoting factor, is a cyclin CDK complex that triggers a cell passage from the G2 checkpoint into the M phase. An example of an internal signal is that kinetochores not attached to spindle microtubules send a molecular signal that delays anaphase. Some external signals are growth factors. These are proteins released by certain cells that stimulate other cells to divide. For example, platelet Platelet-derived growth factors, PDGF, stimulate the division of human fibroblast cells in culture. Another example of external signals is density-dependent inhibition, in which crowded cells stop dividing. Most animal cells also exhibit anchorage dependence, in which they must be attached to a substratum in order to divide. Cancer cells exhibit neither density-dependent inhibition nor anchorage dependence. 
there is a loss of cell cycle controls in cancer cells. Cancer cells do not respond normally to the body's control mechanisms. Cancer may not need growth factors to grow and divide. They may make their own growth factor, or they may convey a growth factor signal without the presence of the growth factor. They also may have an abnormal cell cycle control system. A normal cell is converted to a cancerous cell by a process called transformation. Cancer cells form tumors, masses, which are masses of abnormal cells with otherwise normal tissue. If abnormal cells remain at the original site, the lump is called a benign tumor. Malignant tumors invade surrounding tissues and can metastasize, exporting cancer cells to other parts of the body where they may form secondary tumors.